the Hollywood elite's hidden vice, stars and their bottles. Imagine the glitz and glamour of Hollywood's golden era. Now picture this. Behind the scenes, some of the most iconic stars fought a hidden battle with alcohol. Stay tuned as we uncover the surprising and often shocking stories of Hollywood's beloved actors who lived their lives on the rocks. Welcome back to Freaky Facts, History's Oddities. Today, we're diving into the secretive world of Hollywood's most famous faces and their struggles with alcohol. From discreet drinking on set to public brawls fueled by booze, we're revealing the untold stories of the industry's glittering stars who couldn't escape the grip of the bottle. Michael Landon's Double Life Let's peel back the curtain on the life of Michael Landon, an actor who embodied the essence of on-screen virtue in shows like Bonanza and Little House on the Prairie. To his audience, Landon was the paragon of fatherly and heroic figures, but few knew the inner turmoil that brewed beneath his celebrated persona. Beneath the sheen of Hollywood's lights, Landon harbored a secret, a battle with alcohol and Valium. On set, his coffee wasn't just coffee, it was laced with whiskey. His refreshing beverages, spiked with vodka. This wasn't just an occasional indulgence, it was a daily ritual, meticulously concealed from the watchful eyes of colleagues and fans. After the cameras stopped rolling, Landon's battle didn't end. His evenings were spent at local bars, drowning in the very addiction he fought so hard to mask. Melissa Gilbert, his on-screen daughter, reminisced about her innocence, oblivious to the scent of vodka that lingered around her TV father. Landon's vices weren't just limited to alcohol. A staggering habit of smoking four packs of unfiltered cigarettes a day likely paved the way to his untimely demise from pancreatic cancer at the young age of 54. This stark contrast between Landon's public image and private struggles paints a poignant picture of a man wrestling with demons behind a facade of perfection. His story is a compelling reminder that even the most revered figures are human, fraught with challenges and imperfections. Stay with us as we delve deeper into the lives of Hollywood's brightest stars, whose dazzling exteriors often mask the real battles waged in the shadows. Robert Shaw on the set of Jaws. Next, we dive into the turbulent waters of the 1975 blockbuster Jaws, a film that not only changed the landscape of cinema, but also exposed the stormy undercurrents of its cast's dynamics. Central to this was Robert Shaw, the British actor whose portrayal of the grizzled shark hunter Quint captivated audiences worldwide. While Shaw's on-screen persona was that of a fearless shark hunter off-screen, the actor navigated his own tumultuous sea, a struggle with alcohol. Shaw's affinity for Scotch was no secret on set, becoming a source of contention and escalating tensions, particularly with co-star Richard Dreyfus. The production of Jaws was fraught with challenges, from mechanical sharks to weather woes, but Shaw's drinking added an unpredictable element. His alcohol-fueled tirades were legendary, yet they masked a deeper turmoil that even his towering talent couldn't overshadow. Ironically, in a film about a relentless predator, Shaw's demons proved most menacing. One day, in a moment that blurred the lines between life and art, Dreyfus, driven to his wit's end, seized a glass of alcohol from Shaw's hand and cast it into the ocean, a futile attempt to quell the storm within Shaw. Despite the turmoil, Shaw's performance in Jaws remains iconic but his off-screen battle with the bottle is a stark reminder of the human vulnerabilities that often lurk behind the facade of stardom. Robert Shaw's journey on the set of Jaws is a poignant chapter in Hollywood's history, a tale of brilliance shadowed by struggle, reminding us that even the mightiest among us can be at the mercy of unseen currents. Joan Crawford's tour demands our next story veers into the extravagant and demanding world of Joan Crawford, an actress whose name is synonymous with golden age Hollywood glamour. Yet, 
Crawford's off-screen life was as colorful and controversial as her on-screen personas. As the official ambassador for Pepsi, following her marriage to the company's CEO, Crawford's public image was that of a sophisticated socialite. However, her tour demands tell a tale of excess and indulgence that would raise eyebrows even in today's celebrity culture. While promoting Pepsi, Crawford's contract stipulated a peculiar list of provisions. At every stop, she required an assortment of hard liquors, from Smirnoff vodka to Old Forester bourbon, Chivas Regal scotch to beef eater gin, not to mention two bottles of champagne and, ironically, a case of Pepsi. This wasn't just a quirky stars rider. It was a glimpse into Crawford's reliance on alcohol, a trait that clashed with her polished public image. Her affinity for spirits was more than a mere preference. It was a necessary coping mechanism to maintain the facade of the untouchable Hollywood elite. Crawford's tour demands were emblematic of a deeper issue that many in Hollywood faced, the pressure to maintain an impeccable image while grappling with personal struggles. Her story sheds light on the duality of celebrity, where the sparkle of the public eye often belies the shadows of private reality. Joan Crawford's legacy is a complex tapestry of triumphs and trials, a testament to the enduring struggle between an icon's public image and personal truth. Peter O'Toole's Liquid Courage now let's turn the spotlight on Peter O'Toole, whose electrifying blue eyes and charismatic performances captivated audiences worldwide. Yet, behind the allure of his stardom was a man who leaned heavily on alcohol, blurring the lines between his art and his life. O'Toole's relationship with alcohol was complex and deeply intertwined with his craft. Renowned for his role in Lawrence of Arabia, O'Toole often resorted to what he dubbed liquid courage to face the challenges of his profession. The filming of Lawrence of Arabia is legendary, not just for its cinematic brilliance, but for the tales of O'Toole's off-screen escapades. One such tale involves the iconic camel raid scene where, grappling with a fear of camels, O'Toole and co-star Omar Sharif turned to alcohol, remaining inebriated throughout the shoot. O'Toole's charm and wit often masked the depth of his reliance on alcohol. He once quipped in an interview that his fondness for drink was merely a reflection of the times, yet those close to him knew it was a significant aspect of his life, impacting his relationships and health. Despite his battles, O'Toole's legacy in cinema is undeniable, yet his journey is a poignant reminder of the fine line many artists walk between using a substance as a crutch and falling into its grasp. Peter O'Toole's story is not just one of cinematic triumph, but a candid look at the struggles faced by one of Hollywood's most enigmatic figures, reminding us of the humanity that resides in even the most legendary stars. Frank Sinatra's Jack Daniels' Love Affair now let's step into the world of old blue eyes Frank Sinatra, a man whose voice charmed millions and whose persona defined the essence of cool. But beneath the suave exterior and the velvet vocals was a deep-seated love affair, not with a person, but with a drink, Jack Daniel's whiskey. Sinatra wasn't just a casual drinker, he was a connoisseur, with Jack Daniel's being his constant companion. It was said that his daily routine wasn't complete without a bottle of this particular whiskey, a habit that fascinated and alarmed those around him. His drink of choice was simple yet specific. Four ice cubes, two fingers of Jack, and a splash of water. This ritual wasn't just about taste. It symbolized Sinatra's lifestyle, a testament to his adherence to a certain standard of living, even if it edged on excess. Frank's relationship with alcohol was complex. It fueled his legendary charisma, but also paved the way for bouts of aggression and mood swings. His ex-wife once remarked that when Sinatra drank gin, it was a signal to lock herself away, a stark revelation of the darker side of his drinking. Yet, despite the potential pitfalls, 
Sinatra's bond with Jack Daniels remained steadfast. He even humorously dubbed his group of friends and fellow drink enthusiasts the American Olympic Drinking Team, a nod to their shared indulgence. When Sinatra passed away, he left behind a legacy intertwined with music, film, and yes, whiskey. In his casket, a bottle of Jack Daniels was placed, a final tribute to a love affair that lasted a lifetime. Frank Sinatra's tale is one of triumph, talent, and temptation, a reminder of the complexities that often dwell behind a facade of effortless charm and cool. Elizabeth Taylor's public struggle. Our journey through Hollywood's hidden vices brings us to Elizabeth Taylor, a name synonymous with beauty, talent, and tumultuous affairs, not just with her many spouses, but also with alcohol and painkillers. Taylor's battle wasn't waged in the shadows, it unfolded in the full glare of the public eye. Elizabeth Taylor, one of classic Hollywood's brightest stars, faced her demons head-on in an era when addiction was often whispered about, but rarely addressed. Her dependency on alcohol and painkillers was more than a private battle. It became a part of her public persona, intertwining with her identity in the eyes of fans and critics alike. In 1983, Taylor made a groundbreaking decision that would not only alter the course of her life, but also influence the way Hollywood and the world viewed addiction. She checked herself into the Betty Ford Center, becoming the first major celebrity to seek treatment for substance abuse openly. Taylor's openness about her struggles brought addiction into the public discourse, challenging the stigma and offering hope to others facing similar battles. Her journey was marked by resilience, each setback was met with a renewed commitment to recovery, reflecting her indomitable spirit. Beyond her screen legacy, Taylor's life story is a testament to the power of redemption and the human capacity for change. Her advocacy work, particularly in AIDS research and support, was fueled by her own experiences with loss and recovery, adding another layer to her enduring impact. Elizabeth Taylor's narrative is not just one of a Hollywood icon, but a woman who faced her vulnerabilities and transformed them into avenues for advocacy and awareness, inspiring countless individuals along the way. Cary Grant's Unconventional Healing Our exploration of Hollywood's intricate relationship with substances takes a surreal turn with Cary Grant, an actor whose debonair charm and sharp wit captivated audiences worldwide. Behind the veneer of his polished persona, Grant embarked on a radical, controversial journey of self-discovery through the use of LSD. In the 1950s, at the height of his fame, Grant was one of the first in Hollywood to publicly embrace LSD, not for recreation, but as a therapeutic tool. Under medical supervision, he underwent numerous sessions, believing the drug peeled away layers of his psyche, revealing the man behind the movie star. Grant's quest for inner peace was a departure from the norm, especially when such practices were largely misunderstood. He credited these experiences with profound insights into his personality and relationships, often discussing them openly for his time. While Cary Grant's use of LSD is a footnote in a storied career, it underscores a broader narrative of a man striving to reconcile his public identity with his private self. His journey challenges our perceptions of traditional healing and the relentless pursuit of self-understanding, even among those who seem to have it all. Cary Grant's embrace of such an unconventional path to self-awareness invites us to look beyond the silver screen and consider the complexities of the human condition, even in the most glamorous settings. Leonard Nimoy's off-screen battle Venturing from the final frontier to the depths of personal struggle, we explore the life of Leonard Nimoy, beloved for his iconic role as Mr. Spock in Star Trek. Nimoy's logical, unflappable character stood in stark contrast to his human vulnerabilities, particularly his battle with alcoholism. On the surface, Nimoy was the embodiment of Vulcan calm, but behind the scenes he grappled with a challenge all too human. 
alcohol became his method of unwinding from the pressures of fame and the intensity of his role, a practice that escalated into a struggle with addiction. Despite the support of friends and family, Nimoy's journey was solitary, marked by the internal conflict between his public image and private reality. It was a battle many knew about, but few truly understood, hidden behind the mask of a character defined by his stoicism. Nimoy's struggle with alcoholism wasn't just a personal trial, it was a reflection of the broader challenges faced by individuals in the public eye, where the lines between character and actor, reality and portrayal, become blurred. Leonard Nimoy's story is one of resilience and humanity, a poignant reminder that even those who soar among the stars are bound by the same human complexities that touch us all. His journey from Vulcan detachment to human vulnerability and ultimately to recovery is a testament to the enduring spirit of a man who remained profoundly human despite his celestial voyage. These stories not only shed light on the personal battles of Hollywood's finest, but also serve as a testament to the resilience and humanity of those we often see as larger than life. The journey of each star, marked by triumphs and setbacks, offers a more nuanced understanding of fame's true cost. Delve deeper into the intriguing world of Hollywood's past and present. Subscribe for more episodes where we uncover the hidden sides of entertainment history. In the comments below, share your thoughts or any topics you'd like us to explore next. Your insight makes our journey into history's oddities even more enriching.